Now it's about time that we also speak about our measurement models. So in this video, we will give a few simple examples on how they can look like for different sensors. We'll also look at how sensor calibration can be viewed as an estimation or a filtering problem. A measurement model relates the measurement yk to the state vector xk. We often express our models on the following form. So yk is equal to hk of xk plus rk, where rk here is a measurement noise which we usually assume to be Gaussian with zero mean and covariance capital RK. However, more generally, we can also write this as this density here. So the density of YK given XK. So it describes the density of the measurement given that we know the state vector. The list of useful and important sensors is very long and includes, for instance, radars, laser scanners, or so-called LIDARs. And we can also have cameras. We have these uh, global navigation and satellite systems, so the American GPS system, for example, or the European Galileo. And we also have accelerometers and gyroscopes and so on. As this is way too many for us to cover in this course, and there are actually full courses on each and every one of these sensors, well, perhaps there are no full courses on accelerometers and gyroscopes, but I think you get my point. So here we will merely give a few examples of what measurement models can look like. I will go through four simple examples of measurement models on the next two slides. In the first example, I've assumed that we have a state vector described by this kind of constant velocity parameterization. So the first two here are the position and the last two here are velocities. Now, we have a global navigation and satellite system that gives noisy observations in 2D. Actually, the GNSS systems normally also gives velocities and positions in 3D, but let's assume that we're only interested in 2D positions for simplicity. So the measurement model can then look like this. So our measurement yk would be noisy observations of the 2D position. So measurement 1 could be p1k plus some noise, and then measurement 2 could be p2k plus some noise. Now, I would like you to observe that this is a linear function of xk, because we can write this as a matrix times xk plus noise. The matrix here is our measurement model matrix, which we usually call capital HK. Now, the noise term here, RK, should describe the uncertainty or measurement noise that we have. So in the case of a GNSS measurement, this could account for positioning errors due to unknown atmospheric delays of the signal from the satellite, or that the signal has bounced on a nearby building before reaching our receiver. Now, you can put much emphasis on trying to model this noise process accurately, and if you need very high precision from your filter, you will probably need to do something here. In many cases, however, we simply model this as a Gaussian noise process with sufficiently large covariance to cover our uncertainty in the observation. As a second example, let's assume you have a coordinated turn motion model, such that the state vector has the following parameters. Now, if we get a measurement from a gyroscope set to measure jaw rate, that is the angular velocity in the x and y plane, we simply get noisy observations of jaw rate, right? So we can model this observation as the jaw rate, omega k, plus some noise. Again, the first part here is a linear function of our state, plus some noise. Now the noise term here should typically describe the amount of thermal noise that you can expect in your sensor. Now thermal noise can in many cases be accurately described as Gaussian distributed, and the variance of our noise is often stated in the data sheet for your sensor. However, depending on the quality of your gyroscope, the noise term here will more or less contain a bias that could drift over time. We will later in this lecture discuss how you can also handle this type of bias in your measurement noise. As a third example, you can imagine that we have a radar sensor that observes the distance and angle to an object. Again, the expression for the measurement model depends on how we parameterize our state vector, and the choice of parameterization can actually be important in many applications. In this case, let's assume that the position and the velocity of the object that we are interested in positioning is expressed in a coordinate system such that the origin is in the middle of the radar sensor. In that case, the distance and angle to the object can be expressed quite easily. So the distance is just the square root of p1 squared plus p2 squared, and the angle can be expressed as arcus tangens of p2 divided by p1, and then we have some measurement noise. Now note that this is a nonlinear function of our state, so this is not a linear measurement model. As a fourth example, we could look at wheel speed sensors or wheel speed encoders. In this case, I'm assuming that we have a constant velocity model such that the state vector has the following parameterization. 
Now, a wheel speed sensor measures the speed of a vehicle by first measuring how many revolutions the wheel makes in a second. Now, assuming that the circumference of the tire is known, the speed of the vehicle is then given by the product of the number of revolutions per second times the tire's circumference. This would then give a noisy observation of the speed, and that means that the measurement model could be yk equal to the square root of y1 squared plus y2 squared plus some noise, where this expression here is the speed of the object. However, in many situations, this will be an oversimplified model as the speed of the wheel is obtained by multiplying a noisy observation of the number of revolutions that the tire makes by an assumed value for the tire circumference. If there is an error in this assumed tire circumference due to change in tire pressure, for example, the measured wheel speed will have a multiplicative error factor associated with it. In this case, perhaps a better model would be to introduce an unknown factor, let's call it FC, here, to be able to compensate for the error in the assumed tire circumference, such that the model becomes like this. Now the question that arises is, how can we handle this unknown factor? Well, we will look at this in the next slide. So another important aspect of sensor models is that many sensors have an unknown calibration parameter that needs to be set in order for the sensor to work properly. This could, for example, be the unknown tire circumference in the wheel speed example, or the bias in the gyroscope. So in many cases, we need to calibrate our sensors, and this can also be viewed as an estimation or a filtering problem. Now, suppose our sensor has an offset or bias, S, such that we observe HK plus S plus R, instead of just HK plus R, which is what we expect to get. If the offset S is constant over time, we can often calibrate our sensor once using a set of calibration data or training data. For instance, in many cases, it's possible to collect calibration data in a test scenario where XK is known, and then we can use that data to estimate S. Unfortunately, especially for low quality sensors, it's common that the bias drifts over time or changes slowly over time, which means that we need to estimate it recursively in a filtering fashion. The most common solution in this case is that we include SK in the state vector and describe its motion using a random walk, for example. So SK is equal to SK minus one plus some noise here. Once we have done this, our filter can now jointly estimate the kinematic state and our bias. Here is a small self-assessment question. 